What we're looking at here is a John E. large one that was gifted to me by Jeff Hanna. And this is the original platinum catalyst head that's on the right. And on the left, you can see the charred cotton in the reservoir. And we ran a test on it before we started this operation to replace the catalyst head, and it recorded 150F, which uh, to me would have been fine, uh, it, other than wanting to start this experiment with it. I would have been happy with 150 and left it there. But I wanted to just run a bit of a test and see what would happen if we went ahead and replaced the catalyst, as well as replaced the cotton that's in the reservoir. And uh, you will notice that I'll be pulling the wick out and replacing the little hole that was there with Kapton tape after we've cleaned the shoulders of the reservoir with alcohol. This is just showing the springs that the uh, larger Johnny was on the left and the standard ones on the right. And this is showing uh, placing the catalyst into the spring using some tweezers that have an optimal form factor for doing that. Sorry for the uh, blurriness in there. We forgot to refocus it when I put in. You can see that that type of tweezer does allow you to put the pad in with one stroke and then pull it out without fragmenting the pad. And uh, it stops itself automatically. It is, well, is quite charred. Of course, that charring leads to glazing and then glazing leads to obstructing the flow of fumes from the material so I'm going to remove that material and then place a carbon felt pad in there. So now I'm just pulling out this uh, charred cotton packing material which I'm going to discard. So now I've paused the video so that we can go into more detail in terms of placing a carbon felt strip in. And then you put it in with the forceps. But I found that uh, it required more than one carbon strip. I end up going through three of them in order to get it high enough to the shoulders where I wanted it. And now this is showing putting in one spring that's with platinum. And then we start the test to see how hot this will get. So subsequent to our rebuild, we've been going about an hour and we have been hovering around the 135 mark. So we're not as high as the original catalyst. And when I compare them, uh, it looks to me like it's down to the diameter of the catalyst that's reacting. So what I'm going to do now is see if I can add another spring. And what I have here are the springs that I created in the previous experiment where this one represents two-thirds of a pad that's been inserted. It's a standard size spring and I'm going to see if I can get that in there to mate with the other one that's in there and they can nest together in the same cavity and just see how that one goes. So now I'm taking apart the hand warmer again, moving the spring higher up in the head and then inserting the second standard size spring which also fits the Zippos and it has two-thirds of a catalyst pad in it. What I've got here is I've got the large Johnny e spring pushed right to the top of the head so that the two tabs are holding it up there it's no longer in the center. It doesn't have the taps that are centered into the spring to hold the spring there. The taps are below the edges of the spring and holding it up. And then I have below that the standard size spring with a two-thirds pad in it. And now that is fitting tightly on to the Johnny. And I'll give you a bit of a closer look here and see if you can see that at all. Maybe if I tilt it up a little bit, you can just see the other spring there. Now we start the final heat test that's going to see what we 
can achieve for maximum temperature with the two springs in the head and the elapsed time we're going to look at we'll check it out in about an hour and see where we're at as you can see we're coming up on an hour now with the John E configured with two of the platinum catalyst springs put in the head the top one being the large John E spring and the one below it being a standard spring which contains one and two thirds pads in order to achieve a nominal temperature of around 160 Fahrenheit.